What up? Y'all like my hair? It's getting crazier and crazier every day. It really looks bad, though. There's really no way for my hair to look good, though. So, I just say fuck it and move on with my life. You know? <laughs> I wish that other women knew how to do that, but they don't. You know, Women are obsessed with, like, hair products and makeup and stilettos and shit like that, you know? Because they can't accept the fact that, you know, they're a human being. I'm a real woman, you guys. And by, like, real woman, I mean, like, I'm a human. So I don't worry myself with all that bullshit. Because I got my own bullshit that I'm stewing already. I didn't go to work yesterday because I was having PTSD. I couldn't even sleep. I, was, I couldn't stop shaking. My coworker called me up, left a voicemail message. I saved it because it was like the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. You better get your ass on into work tomorrow. I ain't dealing with this shit. Stupid ass motherfuckers. Bye. <laughs> she didn't have anybody to talk to. That's why she was so sad. <laughs> Because the only person that she talks to is, like, the little Mexican kid. <laughs> Shit. I gotta get going. What are you looking for? I don't know. just don't know. <laughs> so I'm wearing leggings, which is probably a, a terrible mistake. Yeah, because it's not even fucking cold outside. Like, I know that it's, like, almost October, but that really doesn't mean anything in, in Tennessee, you know? It really doesn't. I'm actually wearing these pants that I got at McDonald's. Like, McDonald's, they have, like, a full uniform. But these pants are the shit. They're like really comfortable. They're like cargos, man. Black cargos from the MCD. They have like the coolest pockets. Look at this shit. I'm trying not to hit the button by accident, which usually happens. Look at that. Look at it. <laughs> it's fucking Velcro. Velcro pockets. And the pockets are really fucking big, especially for like female pants. It's one of my biggest complaints about anything female is like the fucking pockets of jeans and like just any pants, like any pants for a female or like comfortable. <laughs> I guess they just assume that women are so stupid that they don't care, you know, they're just like, oh yeah, they'll be uncomfortable because they look good, you know, like I hate that. And that's the thing, like so many women are just like, yeah, they're right, you know, and then they'll fucking bitch about it. Then they'll still keep wearing skinny jeans, you know? It's dumb. Fucking dumb. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming to the realization that uh, I'm gonna be pretty miserable no matter what I do. Like, whether I smoke, whether I don't smoke, whether I do comedy, whether I don't do comedy, whether I masturbate, whether I don't masturbate, <laughs> I'm just going to be sad all the time. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck happened to your, uh, Car keys, Amy. That's a good question. <laughs> I'll let you guys hang out with Bob for a little bit. I got my keys. They're probably in the back. 
right here. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just laughing at my previous statement. Uh, one of them, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you better clarify that one. No, no, no. Put that down. Put it down there. There you go. Let's go. Go. Gotta get going, man. Let's go. Yeah, my, uh, my coworker, Tina, she had a pretty terrible time yesterday because I wasn't there. <laughs> I mean, honestly, though, like, I mean, when she's not there, I have a pretty terrible time myself. Hoping she'll be there and then she's not, and I'm like, where the fuck were you, Tina? Better not have been smoking crack. <laughs> she doesn't smoke crack. She smokes weed. Not all black people smoke crack. They usually smoke weed. <laughs> See ya. Uh... I don't know, I've been thinking about this a lot. And, uh, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense to me, but I know that people will get offended by it, all because it's so true. Uh, I was talking to my friend Jenny Kuntzwaller about the truth. She's like, you know, I think these comedy things, people don't want to think about what's true. They want to, like, Pretend that reality doesn't exist, you know? And that's probably most definitely the case. Because, I, you know, I was thinking about how there are stereotypes for everything. You know, like, uh, people are, are, are trained in this country because of everything that we've done in this country to keep black people oppressed like people are trained to to like get offended by things that aren't even offensive you know if it's if it's black like people are like you know you, you can't say that you know you can't say that black people drink sprite like that's wrong you know i'm like <laughs> but it's just like like there are stereotypes about everybody though not just black people like, there are stereotypes about women, especially, but like, well, yeah, you're really good at those. <laughs> a lot of women talk with a voice inflection. Everything's a question. I don't know why they talk like this. Maybe it's because they don't want to be mean. Like, they don't want anybody to think that they could possibly be mean. It's so true though, man. So many women talk like this. And if you point it out, they get real upset. <laughs> salad? <laughs> Can I get a salad? I highly doubt that that bitch will ever go back through that drive through all because of that day. That day. <laughs> That day that she was like ruthlessly made fun of for her voice inflection. <laughs> All I did was repeat what she said. And I said it in the exact same way that she said it. And she thought it was very unprofessional. Which, you know, she was absolutely right. It totally was very unprofessional. But, like, 
apparently she was about to cry. That's what they told me. Like when she came inside to bitch about me, she was like, she had tears in her eyes and shit. And I'm like, dude, like seriously, people are way too sensitive. Um, somebody's waving a flag. I'm trying not to pay attention to what it was. <laughs> Like, here's the thing. Like, I used to get offended by, like, every little thing. And by offended, I mean, I would go cry and cut myself in the corner. I would never, like, say anything. Like, hey, hey, man, that was really hurtful. Hey, man, you're an insensitive bastard. You know, because I think so many people are insensitive bastards. And I probably seem like one of those people now. That's just because I keep getting shat on by society. And, uh, like, nobody has any problem making reference to the fact that I'm crazy. You know, like, if I did a set list as myself, and I, you know, was talking about that, about having psychological problems and shit, like, the host will have no problem whatsoever calling me out on that, you know, and, and saying, like, oh, yeah, yeah, she needs to shut up around. Will somebody escort her to the psych ward, please? Somebody hold Amy's hand for the rest of her life, you know, like, and I know every single thing that people have said about me because that's the kind of thing that I pay attention to, you know? Well, I pay attention to a lot of things, but if it has to do with me, I definitely pay attention to it. You see, if somebody, say like a black comedian or a gay comedian or a Hispanic comedian, they get up on stage and they make jokes about whatever, stigma, the host is definitely not going to fuck with that, you know, because that's playing with fire, especially with the audience, because the audience will feel the responsibility to get offended, and so the host ain't going to, like, <clears throat> kill the crowd just by, you know, even if it's, like, in good fun, even if it's, like, he's not saying anything derogatory, people will still get offended by it, but nobody will get offended, everybody will laugh. You know, and they make jokes at my expense, all because mental illness is still stigmatized. Nobody gives a fuck. But listen, I'm not suggesting that you stop making mental illness jokes. Keep going. Like, <laughs> if anybody can say that, it's fucking me. You know? Like, I love it when people make fun of me. Even if they say something that's mean, I'm like, good. That means they paid, they paid attention to my set. But yeah, anyway, I don't know what I was saying before. That's an interesting looking bus. Dude, I had this fantasy of driving around a school bus. And no, I, I'm not a pedophile. Um, <laughs> just, you know, doll it up, turn it into some kind of like deadhead bus sort of thing. I think they stopped touring a while back, but in the spirit of the dead bus. <laughs> you just play nothing but Grateful Dead. <laughs> like, just blast it. <laughs> no. I've been listening to a lot of the dead recently, uh, and uh, I gotta say, I, I think I really wanna be like that. Like I. Like, if I tour, I, I go and do stuff with this stuff. Like, I, I want it to be like that. Like, I want to do free shows, free housing, free drugs, all that. See, like, that's what I'm offering, but, like, nobody's taking, taking me up on it because they're terrified of me. It's your turn, baby. It's your turn. Oh, well, she can't go. She can't go because there are other cars in her way. And she doesn't want to die. Go, 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 fuck! <laughs> See, she's not willing to take the risks that you're obviously willing to take. Maybe she's not self-destructive. Maybe she's not suicidal. Maybe she doesn't wake up day after day with PTSD. Oh, by the way, speaking of PTSD, I had yet another LCD sound system dream. Um... 
really being nice today. I just let somebody into the lane. I'm not letting you in though, because I, I, I already did my nice thing for the day. I'm sorry. Don't you hate that? Like, say you let somebody into the lane, and then there's another person that comes up, and they're like, oh, come on. You let that guy in. Won't you let me in too? Come on. Come on. <laughs> I just feel that pressure. But, uh, so I, I had a dream where LCD sound system was at my house, but it wasn't my house, though. It was, like, somebody else's house, and I don't know where we were. But I do know that James Murphy was laughing at everything that I said. So that was a good feeling. But I woke up and started crying. Because I keep having all these dreams about him. And I'm fixing to go see him play his show in Atlanta. I'm really excited about it. But I, uh... I doubt that I'll actually get to meet them, you know? Just because they're a pretty big band right now, you know? Like, they are huge, all because of that comeback. And so, I just, I feel like the chances of me actually meeting them are like slim to none. But who knows? Who knows what might happen? But it's like, I just, I, I have these dreams where like I'm friends with them, you know? And that's just like, <laughs> I mean, I have dreams all the time. Like, I don't have to sleep to dream. Thank you, Fiona, for stating the truth. Uh, I don't go to sleep to dream. That's what she said. That was the uh, original quote. Um, yeah, that's a really good quote, though. Really good quote. Yeah, but, uh, it's like I'm always living in this, like, other reality, you know? And so, and my dream was, like, similar to that. Like, my actual dream, dream, you know? Lucid dream. So, it's just, like, really depressing. I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna go take off these leggings. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. I know. Terrible. But, yeah, like, I just, I looked at my stuffed dog, Beethoven, as you know. Beethoven has been in the bed for like the past three months. He refuses to leave the bed. And, I told him, you know, if, if I were you, I wouldn't leave the bed either. Because he's an extension of me, so that means that he's got depression real bad. And, uh... Yeah, take off the leggings, man. Just take them off. But yeah, like, uh... My stuffed dog would rather be asleep than, like, hang out with me. Because hanging out with me is such a fucking drag. I think it, what it is is, like, he's used to seeing you do the same shit and he's fucking sick of it. You know? He'd rather you, like, real, really push yourself, you know? Yeah, man, but I could just tell that he was judging me today. Like... He's really the only thing that comforts me when I'm having, like, a PTSD episode. You know, I just hold him. I hold my stuffed dog as tightly as I envision somebody holding me. For whatever reason, that helps. You know, the dream. Until it doesn't, until I realize that, you know, you're holding a stuffed dog and... This is your fucking reality, and this will always be your reality. You will always be alone. Um, yeah, it's fucking depressing. But hey, I don't have a smartphone. 